So 3D Code is this really cool sculpting program that I recently picked up this year. And some of the techniques that this software has is so good for concept art because you can get so much detail without dealing with any weird modeling topology or anything. And it's so easy to use as well. So today I'm gonna share with you guys some of the techniques that I have learned throughout this year and maybe uh, it might help you in your own process. And we're gonna keep it short and sweet. Um, not gonna go super detailed into everything but just to kind of give you an idea on how powerful this program is. Now this video will be divided into two parts. Oh, that's four. <laughs> so this video will be divided into two parts. The first part of the video, I'm just gonna go over the tools themselves. And then the second part, we're gonna use those tools and do a quick study. All right, so once you get 3D code downloaded, this is the main screen, the first thing that pops up when you start up the program. For the most part, we're, not, we're only gonna care about the voxel sculpting option up here. So I'm gonna go up here and click this. Once you click that, it's gonna give you a few more options, whether you wanna start with a blank workspace or like a sphere or a primitive or a model. So you can use any of these. For now, we'll just do a blank workspace. So once you click that, this is your 3D workspace. And uh, before you guys get started, just to make sure we're all on the same page here, I have two files on my Google Drive on the link. In the description down below, there's a late page layout file and a hotkeys file. So make sure you import those into 3d code so that your program and a workspace looks exactly like mine so to import your brushes you're going to go to edit and do load hotkeys it's going to open up a window just select your hotkeys hit open i'm just going to hit cancel for now because i already have them and for your workspace you would hit restore workspace when you click that it's going to open up that file so i would just click on the page layout file or whatever all right, so if you did that right, you should your screen should look similar to mine. If not, I'll just tell you some of the panels that we're gonna need for this video. So, so this layer is up here. We won't really need this panel up here, so I'm just gonna close this for now. Your sculpt tree is kind of like your layers. Here's where, like Photoshop, you can like add more layers and stuff here. Oh God, come on! So if I click up here, I can like add more layers, and you can put different models in those layers. And then these are your shaders. Um, these are just for preview. They're not like a, a good, not like a file shader or anything. So it doesn't really matter which one you use for this tutorial. Um, like if you're making a metallic object, you can always like select these. For now, I'm just gonna keep it simple. Just like the first one up here. And if yours look different, just don't freak out. It's because I I changed mine a little bit, like the color and stuff. Um, all right, cool. So let's so basic navigation, right? So if you Press your middle mouse button. If you hold on Alt and then click your left mouse button, you can rotate on your workspace. If you press Alt and your middle mouse button, you can move around on your workspace. And then if you want to zoom in or out, you can either like use your, actually you have to click Alt and then your right mouse button. And it's weird, sometimes it works without pressing Alt because right now my workspace is empty, but usually when you have models up here, you kind of have to press Alt. Like right now, I'm not pressing Alt, but I can still rotate it if I click my left mouse button. And then the, if I click the middle mouse button, I can move my workspace. And if I click and drag my right mouse button, it's zoom in and zoom out. All right. And if you ever forget what those are, you can always refer back to the hotkey sheet. And also you can do it manually from here as well. Like you can, this one up here moves the canvas. This one rotates and this one zooms in and out. Cool. Okay, now I do recommend you use like a graphics tablet or something because it's a lot easier to just draw on it at that time. And so what I'm gonna go now, so we're gonna start off with the tools that I pretty much use for the most part. So the first tool that we're gonna go over is the sphere tool. So let's scroll down. And where is the sphere? It's right here, sphere. Now, just like Photoshop, if I click my square brackets on my keyboard, I can make my brush bigger and, you know, the left bracket to make it smaller. This is your brush pretty much. And what the sphere tool does, you can literally just draw spheres for the most part. So, yeah. I'm just drawing some random spheres. So it's just pretty much a brush in 3D for the most part. And if you look up here, you get more settings. So uh, for now, I have this brush selected. But right now, if I select a rectangle, I can make different rectangular shapes. 
once again just in 3d like that move this up here and also if you rotate your canvas and you press shift it snaps to a specific plane so if you want to make a perfectly straight on a specific plane you can do that and if you press f1 on your keyboard it goes into orthographic mode so it's i like using orthographic mode when i'm doing when i'm starting off my sculpts that way everything's like on a specific plane and that's how you should be doing it as well so just like that and then if i go back up here i select the polygonal option i can make like a custom shape it's pretty cool right and then up here is the lasso option I can make whatever shape I want. This time it doesn't have any hard edges. If you want to create some islands or something, this one's really cool for that kind of stuff. And notice how like they're pretty thin right now. Um, if I want to change the depth of my brush, you see this little, see this little red line on top of my brush. If I press my right mouse button, I can like increase my depth like that. So if I draw now, give it a sec. It's going to be a little bit thicker. Like that. Move it down a little bit. So yeah. So that is your sphere tool. And then the tool that I use with the sphere tool is the 2D paint tool. And now with the sphere tool, right? Um, you'll only be able only make like soft things, like soft voxel models. So with the 2D paint tool, you can select different brushes, and then you can have like those brushes, you can like make stuff like that. And I think by default, the 2D paint brush up here. So whenever you click a tool, your tool options pop up and they're different for each tool up here. So with the 2D paint, you want to make sure we're, I think by default, I'm not sure what it's on. So it's a little bigger, but we want to make sure it's set to plain defined before paint. So what that does when I have my camera on a specific angle, let's say like my, my brush is pointing this model, right? And so if I draw, it's going to draw on that model. If it's on here, it's going to draw on this model. So you see how, how it works? So similarly, just like that, the specific angle. So I pretty much use the 2D paint a lot for just like sketching in 3D for the most part. If I hit Control X on my keyboard, it clears everything on a specific layer. So we're going to do that real quick. And please don't crash on me. There you go. <laughs> okay. And so let's say if you want to sketch something out, you have an idea in your head. So you can just come up here. Okay, I'm just going to make this tower like structure. Maybe something like this, that. And just connect it this way. So it's really good for sketching for the most part. Like I like doing it for random sketches. And maybe there's something like this. I don't know. And then if you pair that up with the symmetry tool, if you pair, press S on your keyboard and enable symmetry. And let's do it on the z-axis and then once again i'm gonna hit ctrl x to clear everything on my layer and so if you want to make something like that really cool so yeah just some quick sculpting quick 3d sketching it's really good for that and we'll do a study towards the end where i'll use all the tools that i've i've shown you guys and then the hot i also have different hotkeys so number one hotkey is 2d paint Number two is the cutoff tool. Number three is build. Number four is move. All right. And then if I pressed shift one on my keyboard, it changes this up here, the brush preset. And then shift two goes to a rectangular selection. Shift three goes to a, a lasso. Shift four goes to polygonal lasso. Shift five goes to a circle. So all these go hand in hand. Every tool has this little option up here that you can use for the most part. And then the other option that, that also I like using sometimes is the stencils option. So for example, I'm going to switch to a square selection, shift two. And then if I select, these are some preloaded stencils. Stencils are just black and white information of images, right? And then if I, let's say if I click and drag here. So it doesn't really work that well with a 2D paint tool. But once we start using the build tool to add fine details to our model, it works really well for that. I'm going to X out of that for now. Control Z. And let's let's just leave it the way it is for now. Okay. 
So the next tool that I'm going to go over is the cut tool. So if you press two on your keyboard, that's the cutoff tool right here. If you can't find it, it should be somewhere up here. I don't even know. I barely use this bar up here. Oh, there you go. Cut off. So as the name suggests, the cutoff tool is just for cutting through your meshes. Just like that, like and just cut through. It's pretty cool. And let me turn off my symmetry for now. So I can cut off maybe parts of the parts of my mesh. And it's really cool for like getting those this cutting through stuff. It's kind of like the last tool in Photoshop. Yeah, it cuts off right here. You can come around. And this is just some bogus voxel sculpting right now. I'm just trying to like show the different tools that I mostly use and just kind of showcase. So now the cutoff tool mostly works only with selections. Like you see all the brushes are grayed out. If you want like a lasso, you can just do whatever. It'll cut right through. So yeah. Cool. And what I'm gonna do next, I'm actually gonna go to sculpt models here and just use a cube next so that we can mess around with it a little bit. Make it a little bit bigger. Right. Press enter. Like yes on that. Okay, cool. So I can come up here, I can make cuts. This is really cool for like if you want to do like custom stones or whatnot. Yeah, and then the other option with the cut tool, if you go up here, it says depth limits. So it's kind of like a good way to just get some cool extrusions in. If I do this, it'll just cut through, but it won't cut all the way through if I have that turned on. And you can play around with that. It's at six right now. If I have it to maybe one, it'll cut a little bit into it just like that and you know how like six gave me a, a deeper cut i think it's six pixels and if i don't have that selected it'll cut right through my entire mesh so depending on what you're doing both of these options can be really helpful but notice how like i'm literally just i'm not even worried about any topology any topology or anything it's just me playing around with the software and that's why i like really like 3d code because you don't really have to worry about any um any modeling any poly modeling constraints and notice how like when I rotate my canvas my model just goes away if I wanted to rotate around my model here if I press F so it sets this as like the main subject and then now it rotates around it okay so that was the cutoff tool for the most part and then with the stencils if I use the cutoff tool let's say if I click this triangle right here and then if I cut it out it's gonna cut through that you see how you see what I did right there and reset this right here. I think it's a little bit smaller. There you go. Similarly, if I use more of like a, let's see, let's do bricks. Well, not, let's not do bricks actually. Let's do some cracks. And then if I set my depth limit to maybe like one, now if I do this, so I get these little cracks up here. So it, it's so cool. It's amazing. Okay, so next tool that I'm going to move on to is the build tool. If I press three on my keyboard, it changes to the build tool right here. Or you can also find it under, I believe, right there in the Voxel tools. All right. And I'm going to press, if I press F2 on my keyboard, I can toggle on and off my grid. I'm just going to turn it off because I feel like it's a little distracting so this the build tool what that does use this tool pretty much for sculpting on your model so pretty much sculpting right now make my brush a little bit bigger I like using the square brush for this and these are your brushes up here so by default there's like a bunch that you can use off so this is the brush this is a tool that you use if you want to do any sort of sculpting or whatnot so right now I have the Brush selected, if I change to more of a selection, I can make a selection up here and extrude it out like that. So it's really cool. You can get some cool extrusions this way. And if I press control, it extrudes inwards. So it cuts through like that. Similarly, if I have it to my brush, if I press shift one on my keyboard, 
and press Ctrl, it sculpts inwards. It's like an inverse. If I don't press anything, it sculpts outwards. And then if I press Shift 4 on my keyboard, I can make a specific shape. So extrude it that way. And yeah. And so what I'm going to do next is let's change this. Let's go back to the stencils up here. And if I choose brick, click on this. Okay. And then now if I make a selection, come on. There you go. Now if I make a selection up here, get this really cool looking brick texture. And these are just extrusions, like these are modeled in like it's crazy how much detail you can get in such a short amount of time if you want to be a little bit more perfect i can use like the rectangle shift 2 click on this one more time if i click and drag there you go so yeah if you're doing ruins or whatnot this is awesome and then what I can do, I can pair this up with the cut tool as well. So if I go back to my cut tool and if I have a depth limit set, maybe I don't want stone on like certain parts of this model. So I can just make selections and delete all that. So, so yeah, that's the build tool. The build tool is pretty much used for like sculpting on top of your model for the most part. Okay, so the next tool that I'm going to go over is the move tool. I press number four on my keyboard. It changes to the move tool right here. Or you can also find it somewhere, I don't know, God knows where. Let's see, let's look for it. Let's see, move, where are you? Right here, under pose. So, as the name suggests, you can use it to like move your mesh around. I, I mostly use this tool for like some, you know, really minor adjustments. Let's say I have like a shape and I want to alter it just a little bit. That's what I like using the move tool pretty much for okay so yeah you can use the move tool pretty much to pull out parts of your new stuff like this as well pretty cool now if you want to be even more precise with where you want to, the stuff you want to move out i like using the pose tool for that the hotkey for that is w so that's my pose tool and so if i uh oh, so there you go. So I'm gonna post tool up here, and if I make a selection like that, and pull this out, just like that. So it's really cool, like using the post tool for things like that. And also do, let's say for example, and to get rid of that selection, you hit Control D on your keyboard to get rid of it. So if I have my symmetry turned on for a specific plane, I'm gonna turn on X and. Z for the most part. Uh oh, wrong brush. <laughs> now let's go to the 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 sorry the post tool. W on my keyboard. And then so now if I make a selection. Oh come on. So I'm gonna hit W on my keyboard. And then selection like that. Let's so select it front and back because the symmetry was turned on. So right now it's only selecting that front face because I have ignore back faces checked. So it's good if you just want to select like the front face of your of your model, then it's good for that. But if you want to select that entire thing, I would uncheck this. If I uncheck it, let's go down here, hit control, hit control D. I'll make a selection. It'll make it it'll make a selection all the way through. Then you can pull it out like that maybe push it down or something so post tool is really nice for this kind of, that kind of thing and what i can also do if i hold on shift i can pull my pivot and if it's towards the middle now if i spin it i can spin it around a specific axis which is really cool you get something like this so you can so you know that you can use it for a lot of things it, it's it's really cool in that sense and right now my mesh is super dense for some reason so i'm gonna hit Control r 10 million polys we're gonna bring it down a little bit because i don't need that many right now let's go like 0 0.25 0 
3.1. Yeah. One of six is more than enough. You don't need anything super dense. Yeah, I think the thing with 3D code it starts freezing quite a lot if you have a lot of polys up there. But that was the that was a post tool right there. Um, the next tool that I'm gonna go over is the Vox Height tool. So the hotkey for that is Alt One. Sorry, Control One. That's the hotkey for the Vox Height tool. And with the Vox Height tool, you just hide parts of your mesh whenever you paint on top of it. I'm actually going to turn off my symmetry for now, you don't really need it. So, let's see, for example, if I'm down here. And then if I hit control, I can bring back, bring back those, the mesh itself. Uh, I really like using this for like, you know, broken pieces of ruins and stuff. It gives a ni nice effect. Like that. Then you bring it back. So essentially, it's just hiding parts of your mesh for the most part. And then if you hit control, you can bring parts of it back. So it's cool for like nice intricate detailing as well. Um, so if I change this to the rectangle, if I click and drag, it cuts all the way through. I think if we set a depth limit, it should not. Let's, let's try that. Yeah. So if you set a depth limit, it kind of just doesn't cut through all the way and I can always like decrease it set 30 right now I can probably do like maybe two and so if I hit control and then I do this I can like bring back parts of it so really quickly you can get like nice little detailing up here and the other cool thing is that if let's say if I hit hit shift O on my keyboard everything that was hidden it brings it all back and now it's on a separate layer as well. So I have that separate, those separate pieces also. So you can reuse those pieces, right? Every, depending on what you're doing for the most part. Like for example, I like kind of like this top part here, but everything else, I don't really like it. So I can grab my cutoff tool and just like cut off the rest. Oh, got to make sure the depth limit is unchecked. Come here, get rid of that. So, you know, it, it's cool. It's cool. I like it. It's a non-destructive way of working for the most part. And then the last tool that I'm going to go over, actually the second last tool that I'm going to go over is the snake tool. The snake tool, I pretty much use this tool for like wiring and stuff. I'm not sure what the hotkeys for that. Is it five? Okay, it's number five. Yeah, so number five is a snake tool. So if I hit snake up here, then I go up here under splines. And then I'm going to hit, so I can use any of these, right? You can also use this tentacle looking thing. If I click and drag, I get this, ooh, it's this weird looking tentacle <laughs> it's pretty cool and then you got i think this is a rope up here that's nice we're gonna make it a little bit small Let's zoom out a little bit turn off my grid so we can have like a rope coming around so these are those presets 3d code presets and i really like it's it's nice you get quick detailing with this now, you, know, you got to make sure your resolution is a little bit high on this because you see how like it starts breaking off a little bit. Let me just make a new layer for that. So if I draw something now, it's still pretty low. So I hit control R. Yeah, it's only 12,000. Let's maybe bring it up to maybe 110. Let's see how that try again. So yeah, now it holds up. And if I go to Tinker Splines, I like using these a lot. These are mostly just like wires and like little wines and whatnot. I pretty much use this a lot when I'm doing like sci-fi looking stuff. Just like an, as a final as a final touch. You know, see that? It's so cool. And then the last tool that I was going to show you guys is uh, the transform tool. If you hit Q on your keyboard, you can just move everything that's on a layer. It's pretty basic. You can move it. Uh, you can rotate it. Or you can scale it up or down. And it moves everything that's on a specific layer. Now, if you want to move, want it to move, so that's why I feel like it's always good practice to use as many layers as possible. That way you have full control over your little meshes. Kind of like how Photoshop works, right? The more layers you have, the more control you have over your final painting. The same way 3D code works as well. The more layers you have, the more easier it's going to be for you to like modify. So for example, now if I had all of this on one layer, 
but I wanted to cut parts of this thing up here. It would have been really hard for me to like grab the cut tool and make sure I'm not getting any of the, the other part and then I'm just like carefully doing it. But since it's on a different layer, I can just do this and it'll cut everything, but it won't affect this because it's on a different layer for the most part. Hopefully that makes sense. So these are the tools that I pretty much use in my workflow when it comes to 3D code. And what we're going to do next is do a study. So whatever software you're learning, it's always good to do like studies because that way you can get used to the program itself. And once you have a strong foundation build, then you can start building stuff on your own. Okay, so I've got this reference image up here and I am using pure ref if anyone's wondering what software this is. And we're just going to go over how I'm going to break down this piece. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to put this piece on a different layer. I'm going to put this piece on a different layer. I'm going to put these two chunks in a different layer. This whole thing would be in a different la layer. This would be in a different layer. A layer for this, this, this. So you're going to break it down to, you know, on each layer. Maybe you can get away with putting these two on one layer. But I would recommend, you know, having separate layers. That way you can easily manipulate your shapes. So I usually like to start off with just like the simple shapes, like simple primitive shapes, like is it a cube or a cylinder, depending on what I'm doing. In this case, for the base, I decided that I should probably go for like a more cylindrical looking shape. So I used one of those sculpt models up there and then I ended up cutting it up a little bit just to kind of reduce the height of it. And then on the top part, uh, it's a little bigger. So I selected with the move tool and just, and just scaled it up a little bit. That usually gives me that little extruded feeling up here. And then I just kept building it in small shapes, just analyzing my reference images. And I, I kept using simple shapes and then on separate layers. And then I just kept cutting through them. Um, and I kept kept adding a little bit of detail here and there for the most part. But if you notice, like for the most part, the way that I do things, like I'll start off with a big shape and I'll just cut it up from different angles and then I'll put it and put it all together. So that's what I was doing pretty much for the most part. I also use the 2D paint tool quite a lot where I'll just like, you know, uh, draw out a, a random blob of like 3D model and then I'll start cutting it up from the corners to make it look more realistic. And then I'll use that. And then I also use the cut tool quite a lot for like inward extrusions where I showed you guys how if you turn on your depth limit, you can just cut, it won't cut through the entire mesh. It'll just cut inwards a little bit to the point where it's not making a complete hole. So that's pretty much it for the most part. Um, just rinse and repeat, you know, analyze your reference image, see how close you can get to the shape. Uh, sometimes what I like to do also when I first started out, I, I restricted myself to my tool. So I mostly just use the 2D paint tool and just drew it in 3D and just cut it up for the most part. And that's also a good way to practice out and see what tool works for you the best. Um, now I feel like it's a lot easier to kind of start off with like primitive shapes and cut them up instead. Because that way, you know, it, cause sometimes what happens is that with 3D code, everything starts looking a little bit more organic. And getting that hard surface look can be quite difficult when you're in that situation. And personally speaking, I do mostly use 3D code for organic stuff. It's really nice for hard surface as well. You just got to be a little bit more careful with it. Just to kind of make it look like it's more hard surface. You have to cut it up and add bevels and whatnot. But with more organic looking, you can just, you know, go crazy with it. And that's for like every sculpting program for the most part. Hard surface is like the most difficult part because there's just so much you can do and just restricting yourself is kind of like the tough part. What I also did up here is that sometimes I will just, you know, sculpt out my models separately and then I'll just you know, modify them and then I'll keep and then I'll put them together on my entire piece up here. And you can also copy paste your layers if you hit shift D on your keyboard. So I did that quite a lot as well. Just to kind of save me some extra time of not of starting everything from scratch on each layer. But that's pretty much it. The, the process for the most part. And if I have any tips for you guys when you're doing studies. Just pick something you like. You know something that's real life. A real life object. Don't even go, go into it creating something that does not exist you're gonna have a hard time executing whatever you have in your head so definitely pick up something that's more real life looking it could be something related to sci-fi or you know it could be somewhat somewhat close to what you're doing like for example this robot arm like it's a real thing but then it can also be something that's not existent in the real world um, pick up household items something that you can feel and see that way you can get an idea of how thick or how thin certain parts of those objects are 
and you know do like a bunch of these it doesn't have to be perfect the first few times i mean obviously when you do it it'll never be good enough like the first few times it'll look like shit it's gonna suck so you just gotta have to you just gotta get past that point for the most part when i was learning learning this program uh what we were doing for the most part we were doing 10 sketches each week so like you know do maybe 10 robot arm sketches you know maybe different variations then do maybe 10 spaceship 10 aircrafts and just quick sketches you know just to kind of get yourself uh, used to the program the UI the interface because that's the toughest part when you're learning a new software you got it can be really overwhelming when you're you know looking at all that uh, UI and interface so definitely take it slow take it easy uh, don't stress too much about it the other thing also that I highly recommend is that definitely do more research on this just because I mean I only showed like six seven tools in this video so don't stop there I mean keep doing your research keep making things that that'll excite you, you know, I know, there, I know there's a lot of there there's a lot of cool tools in 3d code that I personally have not explored yet so definitely don't never stop learning and just keep going at it and you know, just rinse and repeat I mean uh, the more practice you get out of this program the more faster you're gonna get uh, right now it's gonna be really slow when you first do it the first few times and it's gonna look like what's the point of using this for concept art when it's taking me so long but that's just normal that's just a learning curve so just make sure you don't feel down whenever that happens all right you guys so we're pretty much done with this study um just wanted to keep everything super basic just to kind of show you guys that you can do so much by just knowing six tools in 3d code one thing i did forget to mention though that you can use the shift key to smooth smoothen out some of these edges so for example uh, let's go up here I hold down shift key and I just like paint on top of this it'll like smoothen out like that so I've been using that a lot as well throughout this entire process and also when you're using the cut tool when making selection let's say you made a you made a selection but you want to move it now if you hold down spacebar you can move this around so you can move it around and like cut it and whatnot so but after we're done here, I can probably go back to my regular mode, hide my grid, and then I can go up here to render. And this is my render tab. And then disable the symmetry. I have no idea what this little piece is. I couldn't delete it. So this is the render tab and uh, the render area. You can just see what your model looks like with basic lighting. And if you hold on shift and your middle mouse button, you can change. Oh, it's lagging a lot. But let's go back up here. Let's go back to sculpt. So you can use this right here to change your lighting angle. What's the hotkey for that? Oh, let's not run it down. Okay. And go up here, go to render. And so yeah, we can render this as well. And then you know, next thing that you can do is that maybe you can render this out and then take it to Photoshop and then maybe like sketch on top of this. And that's also a good way. So to render it, I usually just use the default settings. So the way that I like to do usually I'll, when I'm rendering stuff out, I'll usually do a perspective render and then I'll get a side view, front view, actually orthographic. Yeah. Usually get a side view, front view and a top view. So it's pretty cool. Alright guys, so that's going to be all for today. I just want to quickly go over some of the tools that I've been using this year and hopefully they probably helped you and maybe it'll motivate you to, to start using 3D code. And if you have any questions or anything, you can always leave them in the comment section below or definitely reach out to me on Instagram. I'm like super active on that platform. And the next thing that I'm kind of planning out on is um, going a little bit more over texturing. Today was mostly focused on the voxel sculpting aspect of it. But texturing is also another feature of 3D code that I personally absolutely love it because you can literally hand paint textures without really worrying about any UV mapping or anything. Um, so be on the lookout for that. And once again, thank you so much for being here. I love you all and I'll see you guys in the next one.